We're back for another video on the channel. We're back with the 21 days, 21 videos today. I've been looking forward to recording this one. It is the q and I put something up on my community post asking for questions. It can be Wrexham related, YouTube related. It can just be anything in general. And we've had a fair few questions being asked. So I'll read some of them out and I'll answer some of them. But there will be a part two of this to come. So apologies if I don't read your question out. It will be on hopefully another video in December. So yeah, before anything, get down there and click the red subscribe button like I said we're on the road to 20k we're trying to hit it before the end of the year so any support is massively appreciated if you want to see more content like this if you want to see more Rex FC content on YouTube click the subscribe button and let's get into the first question the first question is do you play EA Sports FC yeah I do I feel like it doesn't feel like FIFA anymore although it doesn't stop me from doing a career mode of Rex and but yeah I do and it's not as enjoyable as it used to be but if you want to see a Wrexham career mode, let me know in the comment section down below. Next question is, who was your favourite football player growing up? Now, this is a very, very tough question. Now, for my era of when I was like young and enjoying football, there were a lot of players. There were a lot of players. And if I'm being honest, I played in goal. And when I was younger, I used to have number 24 on the back of my shirt, which was from Chris Maxwell, my favourite goalkeeper at the time. So that's the closest thing to my favourite player. Chris Maxwell, I looked up to him. And he's done really well in his career. I think it helped with him saving that penalty in the FA Trophy final against Grimsby. But he was probably my favourite player as a goalkeeper growing up. And the next question is, what do you think about the behaviour of the chairman and other members of Atkinson Stanley after their comments this week? I think it was ridiculous. I think he's an absolute idiot. I don't think it's unfair to make those comments about him. You know, you raise the price by £5 when big boys come to town and come to Atkinson. But... When Wrexham lower the price £5 so they make less profits off the away game, that's a massive problem all of a sudden for the chairman. But when they increase the price by £5 and make something like 13000 more profit, it's not a problem. You know, and I've seen a lot of people say they agree with some of the stuff he says, but this one he is just absolutely ludicrous there's all these tweets and about things like 42 tweets about Wrexham I have seen in the past couple of days so there definitely is an obsession there with Wrexham and we seem to be living rent free in his head I think his comments were stupid and I think what he's done in the past couple of days for the game against Atkinson and how he's responded to Wrexham lowering the prices I think is absolutely stupid next question is not Wrexham related but what is your dream country to visit I've always said this I've said it on the channel I would love to follow Wrexham AFC on an American tour I'd love to go on a tour of America America, you know, looking around, seeing all the places and then obviously watching Wrexham AFC in between those, you know, it's an absolute dream and hopefully one day I'll have enough money to go out there. But yeah, last year looked really, really good apart from the Philadelphia game where I absolutely poured it down with rain. It just would be an incredible occasion and I think it would just show how far Wrexham AFC have come as a club and if I'm being honest, I'd love to visit America. I would absolutely love to visit America. If sometime it could intertwine with Wrexham AFC out there, even better. Next question is, who is the most valuable player in the Wrexham squad? Now, if we're going off real stats, something did come out the other week that Arthur Oconco is actually the highest valued player in the whole of League Two. So I don't know where I can go from there. I think Arthur Oconco, the stats speak for itself. I think he was like 1.7 million or something. So to answer your question, on paper, it's Arthur Oconquo. Next question is, how far could Wrexham go in the next 10 years? I think the sky's the limit for Wrexham. And realistically, 10 years, we're not going to be looking at Champions League, Football, Premier League winners. 10 years time, it's a long time. A lot of people watching this will obviously see that we've gone from the National League to League 2 and look like we're going from League 2 to League 1. You know, some people might think, why can't we do it again? League 1 to the Championship, Championship to the Prem. But it does get a lot harder when you get to the stage of League One. It's a tough league to get out of League One and even harder to get out of the Championship as well. But we've seen it with the likes of Luton Town before. It's possible. You know, although they have got there, I think there was obviously that bit of luck with Luton Town. Don't get me wrong, they've had an incredible journey, but you have to have luck along the way. If we ever do get to the Championship, it will be tough. It will be very, very tough. And it will probably be maybe a four to five year project to maybe get out of the Championship. But... In the next five years, I would be very, very happy to see us in the championship. So going over to Twitter now, and someone has asked two questions. Favourite away day, and is there anything you miss about the club pre-takeover? So much has changed so fast. Do you miss anything about the simpler times? So the first question, favourite away day. What away day have I enjoyed? I really enjoyed Forest Green Rovers. 2015-16 to be precise. I think we drew 0-0 and we had nine men in that game. Forest Green is obviously in the area of Stroud, a lovely place. 
and then obviously to go up to the away day it's not a great ground but the away day there the game Forest Green were high flying that year and we got the 0-0 draw with nine men I believe it Hudson was sent off and maybe Connor Jennings I can't remember but I think it was those two players but to answer your question Forest Green away 2015-16 was my favorite away day and the second question was is there anything I miss about the club pre-takeover yes tickets how easy it was to get tickets back in the day today obviously it happens rob and ryan come in they create that huge surge in demand for not only tickets but shirts etc you know there's a lot of things that demand has risen for related to rex mercy but pre-takeover you know we could decide on the day, you could decide 12 o'clock, oh, do you want to go to the game, do you not want to go to the game? We could turn up at probably 5 to 3 and you could pay on the gate and you could get in. It was so much simpler to get tickets and away tickets, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about being on there at 10 o'clock and how fast can you get them inside the first 20 seconds, you know, there was none of that back in the day. But I'm not complaining, it's great to see how well the club is doing now financially, fan base wise you know we've got loads of new fans which i'm happy to see but yeah if there's one thing i do kind of miss it's how easy it is to get the tickets the next question is what are your thoughts on steve jones leaving the club this is a very sad bit of news news that i wasn't really expecting to read on twitter the other day our stadium announcer steve jones has announced that he will not have anything to do with rex mercy anymore which is massively disappointing because he was a stadium announcer for my first ever Rex Mercy game up until my very latest one. So, you know, he's created memories along the way with this. He's an iconic person inside the racecourse ground on a match day, and it's just very, very sad. I wish him all the best for the future, and like I said, it's very sad news, but what a hero he was for our football club. The next question is, pick your tag team Wrexham duo to take on Langstaff and Jody Jones in a tag team cage fight. If we're going off size, Arthur Oconco's got to be in there. I reckon he could get someone in a really good choke slam. Same with Aaron Hayden. Aaron Hayden, absolute beast. Imagine Hayden and Okonkwo in a two-match fight against Langstaff and Jody Jones. <laughs> They'd be lucky to go alive. I'd probably say a Conquo and Hayden. Actually, no, I think I might change it. I think Ollie Palmer is maybe a bit more aggressive than... I think I might have to have Ollie Palmer in over a Conquo, you know. Hayden and Palmer in that tag team cage fight against those two. I reckon we'd have them. Do you have any German team shirts in your collection? I'm assuming he's talking about shirt collection. I actually do, but all my shirts are in my attic. I've got a Bush and Munch and Gladbach shirt. If I can find a picture, I'll put it on screen now. Now, I got it in a Puma shop. They were doing two shirts for like 50 pound and i got this monster gladback shirt i haven't worn it i think the tags are actually still in it i think that's the only german shirt i've got in my collection i don't own any by munich no dortmund no leipzig shirts but leipzig do amazing amazing shirts and i would love to get my hands on a leipzig shirt one day but yeah to answer your question i've got one puma british monster gladback shirt next question is favorite youtuber now there's loads. I watch a hell of a lot of YouTube, but if I'm going off the top of my head, Simon Wilson, he's got over a million subscribers, incredible, incredible content. And to make things better, he is actually from Rose in Wrexham. So, you know, he only lives about half an hour down the road from where we do, grew up in Wrexham. So, yeah, it's great to see one of my favourite YouTubers was actually born and bred in Wrexham. And I would definitely say the side men are up there. You know, a lot of my audience might be of an older age and they might not know who these people are, but the side men are a group. Bangers out every Sunday. And to speak of things, I was in Tesco today and I've actually found some of their newly released Topps Chrome cards which have gone down an absolute hit amongst people. I thought, let's give them a go. Let's give them a crack, see what the hype is all about. Can we find a signature? Can we find, I think it's a numbered parallel, they say on the box. So here is the box in front of us now, as you can see. It's a proper box. It is tops. It's chrome. So the chrome cards are obviously the better cards that tops do produce. And this is a tops chrome collection. So that means we've got the rubber gloves on. We're taking this seriously in case we do get a signed card. That might be worth more than I actually paid for the box, so without further ado, let's crack it open. There you go, that's what the box does look like, there's what you can get in it. And I'm sure a lot of people have probably clicked off by now, but let's have a look at what we do have inside the box. So there we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight packets inside. Obviously I've watched these growing up and as I've got older, you know, to see them branch out to Topps Chrome cards is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, it works with rubber gloves. This is my first time seeing what the cards do actually look like. There we go, there's a throw a dart Sidemen Sunday. Lovely card. You can tell by the thickness of them as well. They are proper chrome cards. We've got a Zerka, the prequel. I don't know if the camera is focusing. I can only apologise if it's not. 
We then do have a drawing of Simon by Toby. And this is a scene double of Vicstar. So good first pack. I'm impressed by the quality of the cards. Let's put the cards over to the side. I feel like a proper card opener now. Massively impressed by these cards. I think they've done a cracking job with them. Here we have thumbnails. Zerka. Grease Trip. A shoot settings. I like that card. That's a very slick card. Here we have Harry's drawing of Ethan. And a Zerka icon card. I like those. Very colourful and vibrant. Another Zerka card. Here we have this or that Zerka. And another Zerka card. So we've got the roast at the side men Zerka card. A drawing of Harry by Josh, that's three Zerka cards, and a Simon Minter match attack card. Sorry about that, I've just changed the lighting because I've just realised the ring light is actually reflecting on the cards. But yeah, Mini Minter match attack card, that's like the match attacks we used to collect growing up. So yeah, nice card. Moving on to the next packet now. I don't know if actually um, if these come with parallels. I don't know if they actually do come with like one in guaranteed every packet because match attacks back in the day used to come with a uh, like a guaranteed man of the match or even better 100 clubs so here we have how bromantic a drawing of vic star by toby the best side men of them all <laughs> harry rotashaw love those cards i think that's the scene double one and oh my god wait We've got an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. You found a glitch 2.0 signed chrome autograph on card by KSI. The best sideman. What? I don't want to fanboy or anything, but that is a hand-signed KSI card. That is absolutely mental. You can see he's literally signed it on the pen there. And that is, I've got to, I've got to handle this carefully, an 8 out of 10. What on earth? I need to find a sleeve for that. At 8 out of 10 hand side. There's only 10 of those in the world. Bearing in mind, this is a one-off box that I did actually buy in Tesco today. It's even worth opening any of these other cards now. Zerka, Mini Minter, Josh, and another KSI. That's a nice one. That's a very cool astronaut card by KSI. KSI, the man who's fought many big-name people in the boxing industry. You know, he's got Drink Prime, which is worth over a billion pounds, and he hand-signed that card right there. So, um, a Sideman FC Toby, another KSI, we're getting a hell of a lot of KSI abandoned in the desert, Harry, and Mini Minter Icon, that is, that's a men that is mental, that's actually mental, and another KSI, another KSI pull this time, it is in court in 4k, here we have Josh, Simon and Vic, a drawing of JJ by Josh, and KSI's Match attack, so we'll put that there. We're going to have to start a, a KSI collection. And we've got one pack left. We've got one pack left. This has turned out better than I thought. You know, I was buying a meal deal today in Tesco, and I thought, oh, I may as well just stop off and buy a pack, and I thought it would probably make good content for the video. Off KSI, try not to move. A drawing of Josh by Simon and Bazinga Astronaut. Absolutely ridiculous. I genuinely do not know what to say. That is one of the best pulls I think I've ever got in any tops collection ever. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. That definitely deserves a subscription. Let's hope that gets us to 20k, and I'll see you in another video. Take care, guys.